Hi everybody, this is Scott McLeod. I'm talking with schools all around the world about how they're um, reacting and responding to our global pandemic. Today I'm lucky enough to have with me Tim Lauer, who is the principal of Mabel Rush Elementary School in Newburgh, Oregon. Um, Tim and I have known each other quite a long time. So Tim, thanks for joining us. Why don't you just start off by telling us a little bit about how is your elementary school responding uh, to these times? Sure. Um, yeah, Scott, thanks. Um, it's, it's interesting. So this, this week that we're recording should be our spring break. And um, the governor in Oregon uh, basically closed school the week before spring break and indicated that we would have have extended spring break of two weeks. And of course that quickly changed last week to being uh, April 28th is, is now the date. Um, and you know, who knows? I mean, looking around the country, you've seen other states and what they've done uh, in terms of deciding to cancel the year and that type of thing. So, um, it, you know, we were told, hey, it's spring break, just to extend it like spring break. But that's kind of impossible to do because you know that you've got this freight train of March 30th coming, uh, like, okay, that's the day you should have gone back to school. And what are you going to have in place for families and such? So uh, the, our State Department of Education has been uh, gathering resources, ideas, guidance, rules. Uh, I was involved in a few uh, weekend meetings with them where we were kind of giving feedback to some of their, um, some of their ideas and such. And um, I'll be honest, it's, there's a bit of like, um, well, well, it seems like we, we hit the ground running Monday, but uh, there's a lot of us that feel that, um, you know, there's just a ton of questions that, that staff have, that families have. Um, part of the guidance is or, in Oregon is that these are supplemental learning activities that we're providing for our families. There's also, at the same time, they're stressing the communication aspect and the connection aspect with families and students. And so, uh, for example, at Mabel Rush, uh, at K-5, we have really good use of a, a tool called Seesaw, which is a um, kind of a, it, it's a hodgepodge of things, but basically it's a, a place for students to put their work, kind of like a portfolio, but there's a parent messaging component to it that's really kind of nice. And so a lot of my teachers, I'd say all of my teachers have been reaching out to families in this time, uh, recording videos of themselves, uh, pointing families to resources and things to help, you know, it's one thing to be on spring break. It's one thing to be on spring break when you're stuck in your house. Uh, Absolutely right. Sure. And um, so that's some of the work. Uh, uh, parallel track to that, our, our admin team has been working, kind of figuring out logistical types of things about how to get devices in the hands of students who need them. So we've been doing some outreach to our community to kind of determine that. Uh, we're also, uh, we're all doing uh, Google Hangout staff meetings on Monday to kind of, uh, I'm actually doing a practice session with some of my staff this afternoon, um, kind of get them up to speed. Um, but there's a lot of ambiguity about what does the next month and after look like. And the guidance from the state is that, you know, you can't have new learning. You can't run school unless you cover all these bases in terms of, um, you know, supporting students on IEPs and ELD learners and that type of thing. And so, um, and there's a tendency for a lot of folks to want to jump in and do a lot. And, uh, but it's a new area, uh, you know, um, you know, our school runs from roughly 8.30 to 3.10. You know, you're not going to run supplemental learning from 8.30 to 3.10. You know, it's going to be a different type of animal. And so there's a lot of work to do in terms of uh, looking at different models and looking at some of the work that's been done in Asia already with schools that have been closed because of this uh, uh, in, in those areas and such. So um, there's so, a lot of ambiguity. and uh, But also it's like... Um, there's a little bit of hope in the sense of like, um, it does allow you to kind of think differently about what, what is school. Yeah. Yeah. Well, and I guess that's what I was going to follow up on Tim is that I wonder if you and your staff see this idea of you're not allowed to, to really focus heavily on core, core instruction. Right. right. Um, so is that a challenge for you and your staff or is that an opportunity for you and your staff? I think it's going to be, it's going to vary. Folks are approaching that differently. Um, I think a lot of folks look at it as an opportunity. Um, 
you know, I was talking to a, a, a colleague of mine at a, a Jamie Richardson. He's a middle school principal um, doing a lot of really, uh, uh, you know, D school kind of design thinking kind of things with his middle school students. And, and so he's, he's approaching it from this aspect of, um, okay, this is kind of an opportunity to kind of try something a little bit different. Um, there are, but I also had teachers on the last day who wanted to run, you know, thousands of packets and send those home. You know. Right, right, right. Sure. So I think there's a, you know, there are a lot of online tools that we have been using or we've been piloting. So some of those can lend themselves to kind of, uh, I guess, some of that work that you would want kids to continue with, but also knowing that you've got these various tools out there. Connectivity is a big issue. Uh, yeah. You know, for uh, I think in our district, they did a survey a couple of years ago, like 18% of our families don't have broadband um, or don't have any connectivity, mm -hmm. is what they said. I think there's a little bit now, but also how do you leverage cell phones and, and um, you know, community Wi-Fi and that kind of thing. Uh, right. Don Wolf, uh, the, the uh, Portland CIO, um, really great guy. He's been in, involved in Oregon education for a long time. He had a great suggestion of like going out to the community and and telling folks to turn you know add an additional access point to your to your um you know modem thing whatever it's called right. and <laughs> for, for students or something and so that yeah. the neighborhood who maybe doesn't have connectivity can get on you know that type of thing yeah yeah absolutely so tim you know do you think there's particular challenges during this time with our youngest students yeah most definitely i mean it's um you know, ideally, you know, I taught kindergarten for 16 years and, you know, you want activity based, you want social interaction. Um, you know, you don't want kids just doing screen time work and that type of thing. And so, so I think the challenge is how do you construct meaningful activities and engaging activities for, for younger students um, that, uh, you know, you can kind of set up, I'm going to deliver this information to the family online uh, but I, I need you to go out in the backyard and kind of, you know, dig in the sandbox a little bit, you know, right. kind of, yeah. Yeah, well, and I, I know some elementary folks that I've been talking to are struggling with the fact that a lot of these tools, for example, if you have connectivity, are for ages 13 and up. Um, and we yeah. might be able to get around that in a school classroom because the teacher is controlling the tool um, and you're using it collectively. But now at home, you can't do that, right? Right. And I think there's been a tendency like, you know, I mean, it's been this tsunami of like, you know, we're free till, till January or we're, f we're free, we're free. And then, you know, and you know, that's something we've always dealt with, with teachers who kind of want to get it. Hey, this looks like a great thing for my kids to do. Mm -hmm. so, yeah, but we have some guidance and rules and laws that we have to follow to make sure that privacy is protected and, and, and educational right, and that type of thing. And so I, I think, in in the time of an emergency or a crisis, you know, you know, it's like damn the torpedo, tor torpedo. <laughs> and so the 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 nice thing about some of our, you know, some of the the programs that schools have, for example, at three through twelve in Newburgh were Chromebooks. The Chromebooks have a you know they're easily filtered, so even if they go home, right. uh, we're able to say, hey, there's this tool that's really abusive. We don't want our kids using it. We can we can block that, you know, right. you know kind of thing. Um, we we've got a bit of an issue with our K two because they're iPad based. Mm -hmm. um, you know, we had never even considered sending home the iPads, and and now if we you do, um, you've got all kinds of login issues. Um, you know, all right. right host of problems that you have to you have to kind of work through and, and and you know it's like whack-a-mole kind of thing yeah yeah absolutely so Tim we just got a couple minutes left I haven't asked you yet so as you think about what you and your staff are doing what seems to be working well right now um I think yeah you know there is a t I'd say with my particular staff I, I really feel very fortunate in that they um a lot of them have like embraced seesaw and so uh, in my res in our respect, I think that's great because we've got this base platform now that we can use and we can start to use more creatively than we, maybe we have been in the past. Uh, and I have some teachers that are very comfortable with that and, and some that have just used the bare bones kinds okay. of 
part of it, I think, is, is collaboration now between teachers. And so we're setting up like virtual PLC types of groups and, and having, um, you know, and we, we've got a, a good chunk of time that we can now say, hey, um, you know, you're not teaching from 8.30 to 3.10 every day. You're interacting with your, and again, we don't even know how this all looks, but you're <laughs> right. in some manner with your students, but there's another chunk of your day that you're not. And now it's an opportunity for us to grow professionally and, and push out some professional development that's going to help us in through this phase of our, our school life. And then hopefully we, the lessons we learn, they carry on. Yeah, no, absolutely. Anything else you want to share here in our last minute? Uh, no, I just, um, you know, it's been, uh, it's been great to see the uh, level of collaboration. I think uh, a friend of mine, Allison Anderson, tweeted, I think last night that, um, you know, this is like things like Twitter and such where they can be very valuable as a, uh, a an outreach to peers and, and colleagues that you wouldn't, especially if you're stuck at home. <laughs> uh, but this this ability to share and, and how people have been very generous with their ideas, especially on the, I've seen uh, statewide in Oregon, there's a there's a state technology group for like the books and um, they're all crowdsourcing solutions and problems. And this, right. that's been great to see. Cool. All right, this is, we're gonna wrap this up. This is another episode of the Coronavirus Chronicles. Thank you, Tim, for your time. Uh, good luck with the launch here next week and uh, I'll touch base with you soon. Thank Thanks. you. Thank you.